Welcome Duelists, this is your Drama Blue here, introducing another chapter to our casual corner. These deck profiles are aimed for the casual player that wants to play the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! without paying full price for a mission. For our show today, we bring to you an all-star team of Ultra Athletes and Zodiacs. To those that do not know, we here at We Are Team Ojama builds decks for Yu-Gi-Oh! for those that wish to play the game on a stricter budget. Realistically, any archetype or deck can be considered for casual quarter, however, they must fall under two specific rulings. One, the total cost of the deck, including the main and extra, must be at or below $120. Second, each card in the deck cannot exceed the cost of $15 per card, so you won't find cards like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring or Sky Striker engage in these casual corner deck profiles. This is to ensure that the deck is available for anyone of any age. We also try to refrain from including hand traps into the deck unless they thematically or purposely are incorporated into the deck themselves to keep the lines for casual play. However, almost any deck here can certainly be upgraded for casual, uh, sorry, for competitive play as you see fit. The core purpose of the deck is combining the strength of each archetype while elevating its weaknesses to be less glary. Ultra athletes are certainly powerful in attack value and effects, but they lack the consistency necessary for higher levels of play. Zodiacs, on the other hand, have the opposite problem, with consistency being the key figure of the deck, but tend to lack the necessary firepower to get over certain threats. While the two decks only work in tandem by a couple strings, the end result is usually a pretty fiery deck that's ready to play. And with that cautionary briefing, let us begin with the deck profile. I sort the deck by archetype for convenience, and I will get to their interactions as I fur go further along into the deck profile. So to begin with the UAs, there are three mid midfielders as your only normal summonable level 4 monster. His quick effect allows uh, for summoning on your opponent's turn, but typically you won't be using it as you don't play the right amount of UAs to capitalize on this function. All UAs have the inherent ability to special summon themselves by returning one UA monster from the field to the hand first, so it's important to really get him on the field as fast as possible. The defensive UAs that we play is two copies of Perfect Ace. He works his card negation during your opponent's turn by discarding a card. And pretty much like the card that you want to see or want to play when, your, uh, when you go into your opponent's turn. For the offensive line, we come with two Mighty Slugger and one Dreadnought Dunker. Uh, typically having either or on the field can win you the game in tandem with other card effects. But their offensive serves different purposes, in Mighty Slugger having the effect to prevent card activations during the damage step, and Dunker having both piercing damage and the ability to destroy a card in the field when he deals battle damage. They share a similar position on the team, but they slightly differ in utilities based on the game plan, so whichever you bring out is usually dependent on the situation. And that ends our UA lineup. The Zodiac lineup is pretty usual, or at least standard when it's used as an engine. 3 Thorough Blade, 3 Whiptail, and a single copy of Brett Pierre. Due to the amount of searchability and special summoning the deck goes off with this engine, you typically like open up the right amount of Zodiac monsters you need to start going off. As we all know, Zodiac can set up decently with only a couple cards. Thrill Blade discards uh, Zodiac for a draw on summon, which is important, or at least on normal summon, I believe. Or special summon, actually, sorry. Uh, so it does it both. But basically, it's important to add uh, advantage through the draw, and it's also used to set up the Zodiac in your graveyard for XYZ summoning. Whittail as XYZ material banishes a monster that it battles, so it serves both offensive and defensive purposes. Red Pierre is pretty interchangeable since his XYZ effect is no longer valid with the ban list since he's at 1, but he does set up some recovery plays here and there, so I prefer Red Pierre over things like Ram Ram or Bunny Blast. The spell creates cohesion with the deck and is the main strategy when it comes to setting up your game plan. UA Stadium here is the field spell and it's perhaps the most important card of the deck as this card really helps push your offensive position. Upon normal summon of UA monster, you get to search for a UA monster in return. But more importantly, when you special summon a UA monster, all monsters you control gain 500 attack. 
This is not limited to UA monsters, so this boost is the main playmaker to score your life point leads. It's also important to note that the effects for the 500 is all mandatory, and the effect is not uh, doesn't end at the end of the turn, so they keep their attack bo uh, bonuses. <clears throat> UA Sidey deals is the main way you special summon UA monsters. Uh, by basically sacrificing life points based off on its level, uh, and having its effect negated, you get to special summon a UA monster from the deck. Uh, but always remember that the ability to return to hand and special summon a UA monster from the hand is inherent. So even if the monster is negated, you're free to return the negated monster back to your hand and special summon another UA monster from your hand. And if you really want to, return that monster back that you special summoned from it, especially the one that you uh, previously special summoned on Sidey Deals in the first place. UA Power Jersey is the final card for the UA uh, spells, and it's basically the end game plan for the deck. Equip it to your UA monsters to give it a 1k boost in stats, then battle your opponent's monster for double damage, double battle damage, and the ability to attack again during the battle phase. For this, I play one of since it's really only for the end game push, but you do want to see it transitioning to, from your mid game to end game as soon as possible. If not, right, like scoring the win right away. The Zodiac spells are are a way to boost consistency for your deck, but to get to the Zodiac spells first, you either generally want to open up with one uh, copy of Fire Formation Turkey because it's so important we play three of, and of course Zodiac Barrage uh, as a way to special summon straight from the uh, from the deck itself. There's nothing else to say really as it's using these combinations is just simply a way to streamline your plays and try to get as much consistency as possible with the deck. The generic support is pretty standard, for at least when it comes to uh, UAs in the form of triple Foolish Burial Goods. Uh, you use it to send Penalty Box to the graveyard, and you can basically banish Penalty Box and then get any uh, UA spell that you want. And it basically turns any UA spell as a means, or it turns it searchable, I guess, and that's really the most important aspect of it. We do double terraforming because we do want to open up the field spell if possible. So if you have uh, the field spell uh, already in your hand, or at least a way to get to it in the form of terraforming, then you can use Foolish Burial Goods to get UA Sidey Deals, which is a way to special summon a UA monster. The last final generic copy we play is one Reinforcements of the Army. Just as kind of like a fourth copy, so to speak, of Nunfielder. You do want to see him as soon as possible, because in combination with the field spell, you gain a lot of advantage that way. The trap lineup is smaller. The archetype focus is with two penalty boxes and one Zudia combo. Penalty box banishes opponent monsters for two turns, uh, for sorry, two of their end phases once per turn. While in the graveyard, you could banish it to add a UA spell. So typically, you know, you're searching for the field spell or signing deals at the start. Or during the end game, if you have it available, you could get jerseys for the goal winning touchdown. Zudia combo is a free XYZ material on one of your Zudiac monsters. While in the graveyard, you can banish it, target five Zudiac monsters, return them to deck, and draw a card. This one is all about recovery. The traps are mostly used to gain card advantage more so than the actual on-field trap effects itself, which is why Foolish Burial Goods is so important. Though they do come up occasionally, and it does serve its purpose. The final three cards of the deck is two Solemn Strikes, and one Solemn Morning to disrupt your opponent's plays. And that pretty much rounds up the main deck. For the extra deck, outside the, X, the Zodiac XYZs, you don't really go much into it otherwise. The UAs are usually powerful enough to win games on their own, though there will be some occasions that you will go into it, but it's usually mostly for utilities reasons, or to get over a monster your UAs can't get over. Gotta keep your head headed to the game and focus on the goal, which is getting your opponent's life to zero, so sometimes UAs are not the ones that do that for you. For the Zodiac XYZ summon, 
we get one hammer claw, two boar bow, two tiger, and two copies of Chakadai. Uh, pretty much this ratio is more or less the standard. It tends to take up a lot of room in the extra deck, which is perfectly fine because the UAs don't really need to go into the uh, extra deck all that often. Uh, the most important pieces are the Tiger Mortar and the Chaka 9, as one pushes for a stronger advantage, like Tiger Mortar does by adding XYZs from the graveyard, and Chaka 9 being able to special summon from the graveyard. Hammer Kong is usually most as a special summon for the ladder's effect, since you can get them a material via Tiger or a Zodiac combo. He prevents targetings on your more important Zodiac beasts, uh, which is why it's important. Borbo is just a name, unfortunately, since you'll probably never get its effect off. So sometimes you can you can definitely change out uh, having one Borbo and two Hammer Kong instead, but it really doesn't matter since uh, Hammer Kong you can just easily just special summon it back once it gets destroyed anyway. The lake monsters aren't too effect, aren't too important. Sorry, as mass summoning extra deck isn't really imperative for the strategy. But I do find having two copies of Mrs. Radiant, one copy of Firefighting uh, Dorama Doll, and one copy of Decode Talker is always a nice generics to have. Uh, Mrs. Radiant is uh, used to boost your Earth monsters, and since all monsters in this deck are Earth, you'll you can easily special summon her out as possible. Uh, Firefighting Dharma Doll is kind of like there as a Zodiac buffer if you don't feel like going into Zodiac plays. He is okay. Uh, he's also used as a way to destroy spell and trap cards by destroying your own, and it's very easy to do that by setting like your Zodiac combo or setting your penalty box, gaining advantage, destroying their spell and trap card, and then gaining advantage off those two cards that you've destroyed. Decode Talker is a way to mostly prevent targeting. The final XYZ summoning decks are pretty much all utility based. Abyss Dweller is used to stop graveyards. Number uh, 61, Volcanosaurus are used to push for the game, destroy monsters, burn life points. Number 41, uh, Babuska is used to stall out your turn if you find that you're just not getting the right monsters you need. And finally, Tornado Dragon is the final card uh, XYZ to get rid of spells and traps. And that pretty much uh, wraps up my deck profile for Zodiac UAs. The cards themselves are fairly expensive as a whole. Uh, the main deck probably costs you about forty to fifty dollars, uh, with the more expensive cards coming off the solemn cards. So that kind of gives you an idea just how cheap and easy it is to build a deck, considering that the solemn strike was reprinted like like a month ago, I think I believe, or maybe a couple months ago. But still, you probably get it for like less than like three bucks at the, for each copy. So like, even if you want to, you could like really lower down the cost of this deck even further. Uh, the XYZs and the Link Summoning um, is also fairly inexpensive. Uh, I believe that the entire extra deck in itself costs about uh, twelve twelve dollars ish. So because each copy of the extra deck like definitely less than a dollar so it's less than like to get everything it's like really really inexpensive I think the more expensive card would probably be Tornado Dragon but he was recently reprinted as well so it's really easy to get all the cards you need and that's pretty much that's all for the deck profile duelist <laughs> uh, thank you for watching please like comment subscribe for more upcoming videos and more casual porn uh, corner profiles in our lineup Stay tuned, Duelist, because the fun is just getting started.